that said that more art be sold online than in brick and mortar galleries. I can't vouch for the calculation, but it's compelling. Um, Sachi Art does a report most years, although they haven't done it for 2019. I'm not sure why. But they valued the global art market at, at 64 billion in 2017, and it's just continued to grow. If you look on Facebook alone, there are 100 or 1.66 billion daily users. Uh, and then if you look across all social media platforms, that's 2.26 billion. So that's a lot of people. Um, on Instagram, which is, I guess, the next most popular engaged network, you have a billion monthly active users, and um, a lot of them are younger, whereas Facebook uh, tends to have um, the older audience like myself. Um, 500 million Instagram accounts use it every day. It's pretty significant, and businesses um, are using it for their customers to discover new products. And I can tell you artists are using it. I, I would guess that many of you are on Instagram, but um, that is one to investigate if you're not. We, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Okay, so um, for the purpose of this workshop, we decided to divide it into uh, four sections to cover the different ways that selling online works. One is using your own website, which includes creating a website. Uh, the second is selling on social media. Uh, the third is using an open or juried art sales platform. And then there's uh, print on demand is another option. So with websites, it's, uh, this is the part that I did a little bit more research on. Uh, some of the advantages, you have more control over your, how your work is presented. There are no commissions or sales fees if it's your own website. And there's affordable options. Uh, almost all of the website uh, builders that I've looked at have a way to get started free. Though I got to tell you, once you start selling, it's very difficult to find one that'll let you do it free. There's some disadvantages, for example, it's only your own uh, market marketing. Um, nobody's going to stumble on your website unless they're looking for you. It's also a more complicated beginning, and there's additional learning steps all the way uh, through. And one alternative that um, Amy Ferguson came up with is that her website right now directs people to her Etsy site so that she hasn't had to do the complete um, setup for having a sales room. Amy, do you want to talk a little on that? Yeah, so um, when I started with my website, my first website was using WordPress and I had Etsy and I, because I didn't want to bother setting up the website to sell products because that sounded really complicated and it was already hard enough to do everything else I was doing. Um, so I started doing Etsy and then slowly over the years, it's the WordPress website was just kind of a mess. So I switched to Squarespace because it's actually, to me, it was a lot easier to use. Um, and Squarespace lets you create a page on your website that's essentially just a link. So if they click on, the, on that, on that uh, page of your website, it just takes them automatically right over to whatever link you wanna put in. So I just direct them that way to Etsy now, which I never did before with my website, which was really cool. Um, but Squarespace also has an option where you can build a web shop in Squarespace. You have to pay more per month than I'm paying right now for just a regular website, but I'll be looking into that very soon. Um, Thank you, Amy. Mm -hmm. So um, you also have uh, multiple websites, uh, Kat. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, in looking at these website options, so the Build It Yourself website, um, Big Cartel, <laughs> forget the name, it's actually a really good platform. It's very easy. And I became familiar with it when I saw, maybe four years ago, another artist on Instagram selling their work and the link went to their big cartel website. Now I was really curious about it. 
So I, you know, researched Big Cartel and I decided to do a sale every year using Big Cartel. It's only temporary. I mean, you can have the website forever, but my sale, I only do for like a week or something each year, kind of the end of the year to clear out stuff. And you don't have to know any kind of um, website lingo or HTML or anything. The help menu is very good and it's, it's very quick to set up a website in a day, you know, with 10 or 20 paintings or pieces of jewelry or pottery or whatever you have. Um, and then what I did is I e-blasted to my mailing list that link and said, you know, I'm having a special sale and it went very well. So um, I use that on occasion for my special sales because it's quick and easy and it's also very inexpensive. You get a month for $9.99 for up to 50 products. And then I think it goes up to like 100 or 150 products for 20 bucks a month. So you can cancel it at any time. So super straightforward. Um, I've also used Squarespace and I agree with Amy. It's, it's a great platform. You get some bells and whistles the more you pay per month, but it's, their tutorials are, are super. I learned a lot. And again, it's one of these things where now we all have time where we could consider making a nicer website and marketing it to our customers or even marketing it to all those people on Facebook. Um, the other one I have experience with is Shopify, a little bit more complicated than Squarespace or it just has things in different places. It's about the same type of platform and it can do, um, pretty websites, make your art look good. You know, you're just choosing a template on these sites and then plugging in your, you know, you're populating it with your artwork and your information. Um, if you're considering an online site that's permanent that you want to be able to sell from, I would look at both Shopify and Squareface, Squarespace. <laughs> anyway, look at both. Um, see which one you think, you know, appeals to you more. They actually let you see several of the templates and information ahead of time. So you can kind of, you know, determine like, well, what template do I like? How is this going to look with my work? And, and so there are options um, within both platforms that I think are really good. I've got a lot of websites on the Wix uh, basis. Um, I, that was a decision I had made four or five years ago to put all my art fairs on that one after experimenting with GoDaddy, Weebly, Squarespace. Uh, they've all changed a lot since then. So mm -hmm. I went back and experimented. And these, uh, if you look on the screen, any of the things that look like links actually are links. So mm -hmm. I'll be sending this uh, to everybody who completes the survey. But the three places that says trial site, I went on there and each of those places has a site builder where you answer a few questions and it tries to create a site for you. So I used the site builder to do a poster selling site, uh, selling our art fair posters just for fun. So you can take a look and see what the three easiest uh, solutions were on those. Uh, the web is mostly built up of people who use Drupal, Joomla, or WordPress actually, and those are also website builders, but they involve a lot more complication. And I would suggest that unless you want to really study coding, uh, stay away from that. But uh, oh my God, you know, that's where, believe it or not, all, most of the sites that you're seeing when you're out there, if they're sophisticated sites, that's where they came from. Comparisons of the uh, uh, different websites using uh, my experience. Um, so uh, we'll send you all this, but before we move on, uh, Kat or um, Amy, did you want to talk any more about these sites? Um, I think everything is up there. It's uh, like I said before, I think Squarespace and Shopify are very equal in a lot of ways, and it's just going to be personal preference. The pricing structure might be slightly different. I know you can get on Shopify for $29 a month, 
um, and I can't remember what the square space beginning plan is. Amy, 16, do you? I pay sixteen dollars a month for just okay. like a real website. I don't know how much it is for the other mm -hmm. one. I'm assuming in like the twenty range. Yeah, I mean, it's totally reasonable. I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. So one of the things uh, Kelly just uh, texted to me: what is WYSIWYG? W uh, that's mm -hmm. what I put under uh, Squarespace. That is a term meaning what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. And often used in art because you're making a print. Whatever you make on your print is what you're going to get. Um, to me, that's the easier way of doing things. When it's not that, often what you have to do is type everything in one box and then it goes into the box that you're actually looking at. And it's just a little bit more complicated. My experience with Squarespace was that that's more the style of that one. Is that accurate to your experiences? I think it, it works well for art or, you know, a product. It would work well for like, um, I hate to say product, another art, another art form such as functional pottery or jewelry or um, something three-dimensional. Mm -hmm. I did want to add one thing before we moved on is another thing you can easily plug into your website, at least on Squarespace, is a little box for people to sign up for your email newsletter. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone should have an email newsletter because it's, it's people who actually care <laughs> about your work. And then you can send them emails. And oftentimes I get sales from whenever I send out an email newsletter that day, I get a few mo most times. So. Um, it's just another little feature you can add into the template of the site. Yeah, that, that's true for Shopify as well. And I think, um, you know, I had, a, I had a friend told me, I guess, many, many moons ago, and, and they said, you know, Kat, your email list is everything. And I didn't really think much about it at the time, but it is everything. I, I send um, an email to my mailing list about every five to six weeks. I use constant contact to do it. That's just because I understand how to use it. I learned how to use it and I like it. Um, other people use MailChimp and I'm not sure what else there is besides MailChimp. Yeah, I use MailChimp. Do you use MailChimp, Amy? Yeah, so I mean, all I can say is I can't, you know, I can't um, overemphasize how important it is to have your work in front of your your collectors and if you and if you don't have a mailing list or it's a small mailing list um you know as you heard me describe this other artist on instagram um you know incentivizing people to to give their emails i think there are ways to do it and um your email list will keep on giving. It's the gift that keeps on giving. I'm always amazed <laughs> how many people will buy after sending out an email. And um, that's why I, I have a sale every year because I, I like to reward people that are following me that have bought my work in the past and who stay on my mailing list. Um, you know, I, I'm incenting them to continue and not unsubscribe. Um, that said, I do get a few unsubscribers every time I send out the list. I have several thousand people on my list at this point in time. I've been doing shows for 23 years. Um, so if I have a few that leave, that doesn't bother me as long as there aren't like a thousand leaving. But I think it would be normal that people come into your email list after collecting from you for a while, then, then they're going to go out. Kat, I'm going to try and unmute Glenn. He has a question about your email list. How are you storing your email list? Um, I'm storing it in constant contact. So I paid for constant contact. I paid for a year. And it's an entire email solution. So I store them by geographic um, location. And I do it kind of by show so that if I want to target, you know, if I'm going to a show and maybe I haven't been there in a couple of years, I will send an e-blast to that geographic location only.
to say, you know, I'm coming back. I'm so excited. I'm returning to this show. I hope I can meet up with you at the show and see you guys. And then I'll put um, images of some of the works that I'm bringing. So I find that it's a great way to organize everything. And when you think about um, putting all your emails on this software online and you think, oh my gosh, they're not mine anymore. They're still yours. You can download them they, into an Excel spreadsheet. Um, so it's, it's always your data and your information. You're just using that as a way to organize your emails. Yep. Does that answer the question, Glenn? It does. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's two other programs that are very prevalent in the email uh, category. One is Mailer Lite and MailChimp. I use Mailer Lite because for my size list, it's the least expensive um, mm -hmm. and it has a lot of email templates. Um, sometimes um, MailChimp is probably the biggest one and has the most templates. Yeah, but yeah I use MailChimp and I have a free version because my list is under 2,000 people because I've only been collecting for four years. Um, so there's another thing. Cool. Don't always have to pay for it. I, if I get to 2,000 ever, then I will um, probably start paying for it. But also one thing that I do is I usually collect a lot of my emails at shows and I have a clipboard people write hand write their emails and I save all of those little pieces of paper too just in case something ever happens digitally to my list that's saved in MailChimp. <laughs> yeah yeah because I, I know someone who lost a, a mailing list once they somehow deleted it and and so now I write I keep all the little <laughs> the stuff people write on. <laughs> yeah there, I think it's always good to have a backup you know either electronically on your own yeah. computer or handwritten or whatever, but I always ask for emails that shows, even if somebody hasn't bought, but they were in my booth a long time, you know, I'll ask them, you know, do you want to sign my mailing list to get previews of new artwork and also um, to be on my list for my special sale at the end of the year? And usually when they hear that, they'll say yes. Graham. And I, I want to throw this in really quick while I'm thinking about it. I saw... I have a friend, uh, another friend who does art shows and on her Instagram page, since I guess everything got shut down maybe the past month, she has been doing her own, you know, festival on her page. So every day she's posting something for sale. She is selling and she is trying to pick up new people for her email list and here's how she does it. She puts out a call for 10 people to provide her with their email. So she's asking for permission to sell to them. Once she has 10 people, she gives away a $100 print to them. So she, she uh, raffles it off between the 10 people that sign up. The other 10 people get a gift certificate for $100 towards any of her other work. So what's happening is she's giving away one print, she's incentivizing nine other people, and guess what? She's selling. And she's been doing this once a week on Instagram. It, it's, it's amazing. And she'll just, you know, on Instagram say, okay, I need one more person to reach the 10. So she's building up her email list where she didn't have one before. And she's also building a lot of Instagram followers. We have been talking a little bit about the social me media sales options. Uh, Kat was explaining one of the ways Instagram was used. And so these are the two uh, social media platforms that um, are uh, the most used. Uh, if you're over 35, you're probably mostly on Facebook. If you're under 35, you're probably mostly on Instagram. Uh, does anybody in the audience want to talk, uh, tell us a little bit about how you've used social media uh, for selling? Uh, I'm going to unmute Emily. And can you talk a little bit about it then? then? Um, so I recently set up Instagram sales 
um, on my Instagram account. Um, my account is Elo Ceramic Art, if anyone wants to pull up and see how it looks. Um, so when I post a photo of one of my pieces, I could actually tag the product itself and then that goes directly to my Squarespace website. And then somebody can um, purchase without ever leaving the Instagram app. Oh right. Nice. That's awesome. Um, and you can do the same thing with Shopify. Yeah. So you, it's uh, it's a little bit of a nightmare to set up, honestly. Um, but if you're you, so you have to have a website to set it up. So I use my Squarespace website, but you can also use your um Etsy catalog, I've been told. Um, and I just went on and Googled the Squarespace tutorial for it and went through and did it. The tutorial is a little out of date. There's a, at the very end, there's something where it says it'll just do it. Um, but you have to, um, you have to actually go into Instagram and then hit a button. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then it's linked through because Facebook owns Instagram. So it's actually, the catalog is in your Facebook page. So you have to have a Facebook page that is linked to your Instagram page for it to work. Um, but nowadays it works really well if the less steps that people have to do to get to your work. Um, so if they don't ever have to leave the Instagram app, then it's more likely that they'll actually buy. Uh, Troy, I had a quick question yeah. about uh, Facebook. Um, Troy, do you want to go ahead and ask it? Sure. Uh, so actually, there's two questions. One is on Facebook, there's a section for shop. Uh, so you can add items to your Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if I've done something wrong or if there's a limit with my account that I've got one item put onto uh, my my Facebook shop and that's all that I can add to it. Um, the other question is regarding the Shopify or Square, mm -hmm. my own website, um, are those compatible with my website or do I have to create a new website uh, through Shopify or uh, the Squarespace? Um, I can answer the second question as I'm not sure I can answer the first. You would <laughs> You would need to have a Shopify website or a Squarespace website. Either of those channels are can be integrated into um, your Instagram or your Facebook feed, just like um, Emily was saying and Amy were saying. I haven't done it myself. I was actually reading about it, and it looks like it's going to be a long day for me to do that, but, I, but I'm going to do it. You have to have a Facebook business page and then you have to set up your catalog of your items that you want to sell. Mm -hmm. um, Kelly uh, just finished um, putting a bunch of things on the uh, Mint uh, Artist Guild uh, Facebook page. So I'm going to ask her if she would mind uh, sharing a little bit about how she did that. Sure. Hi, Mark. I think the most important thing is that you have, can you hear me? Make sure you can hear me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, you have to have a business page. So I noticed the one gentleman that asked, we only had one, one item show. Got to make sure you have a business page. And secondly, uh, what I find when you start your shop on Facebook is you have to complete everything in there. You have to determine your shipping. You have to determine, make sure your quantities are entered. You have to determine your tax. Don't leave anything blank because that will, it'll, just, it'll be an internal processing. And so if the items aren't being published, you have to also click, click published when you're done. Um, you haven't published yet, or you have published and you're still not seeing your items and they just show processing, my recommendation is just to re-enter them. I have reached out to Facebook help a couple of times and ultimately I just fixed it on my own. So it is, um, there isn't any really good tutorials. It's really just trial and error. So um, just make sure you complete everything um, that's being asked of you when you enter your items in your shop. The next category we have is uh, on, uh, li online sales platforms. So these are things that uh, most of you have some familiarity, I would think. Etsy is the biggie. 
Uh, it's basically an established website where you can put your work on there and they will sell the work. Uh, the are in two categories here. One is things that are open to anyone. Basically, you as an artist can go in there to any of the ones in the left-hand column and establish your own uh, page. The ones on the right-hand column, you either need to be invited or apply to get in, so it's more like a gallery. And those charge more, but you're gonna be in front of some important people. What was interesting to me is that Amazon has a handmade section where you can put art, it's more for craft, but they also have a fine art section that you need to be invited to. Um, this is a close up on Etsy by Amy, and then Antoinette will come back to you for the, your question. Um, yeah, so I, I wrote out this whole um, slide. There's a lot going on on here. Um, I, I have been using Etsy for about five years. There are still things I'm learning, um, even though I've been on it for that long, mostly because they change a lot of stuff a lot of time, which is one the first con I put. Um, but basically the good things about Etsy to start with are um, that Etsy has been around for, I think maybe over 10 years as a site. So Etsy itself has its own audience that's quite large. Um, it shows constantly people like why I made an Etsy is because people were asking me if I had one and that's before I had a website or anything and so I was like well I got to make one of these um, so um, so yeah they you can search for items on Etsy it's like its own Google but it's just shops that are on Etsy so people you're like all together as artists on Etsy it's not and I think it's it's more specified than just if you searched for a print on Google um etsy once you get used to it it's it's quite easy to make listings um you can now run sales on etsy which is cool like they they keep adding things and taking things away but they keep adding like little, little flags like below your listings like oh this one has free shipping or oh this one's 15 percent off like to try and get people to buy for for you um, you can also do this really cool tool where if you've made a listing, you can copy it and then quickly just change, like, I sell lots of ornaments, so, like, it's the same information for each ornament, but it's just, like, a different title or, like, a different photo, so I can quickly copy the listings and then just make a bunch of ornament listings in, in like, an hour. I can make, like, 20 listings, which is pretty cool. Um, I didn't know about that for a while, and I used to have to do every single one. Um, you can customize your shop to an extent like you can put your own banner at the top but they control the main template of like where your photos are and like where your name is and how the reviews look and they're they're constantly tinkering with it every time i log on etsy every week something is in a different spot and i'm like i don't want that there but i can't control it so they get lots of feedback from people who get really mad sometimes um on the forums um, but the more reviews you get, the more people come to your shop. So you always, when I first started on Etsy, I used to send out, I used to, I still handwrite little notes with each order and I'm like, please leave me a review. It really helps my shop. And it does. Um, so I've tried really hard to get only good reviews. Cross my fingers, it's still working. Um, Etsy lets you create your own policies. So you get to like for shipping policies or like any like refund exchange, like you can make anything you want for that. Just it helps people actually read it, but you never know with people sometimes. Um, and they just have a lot of tools for to help. Like you can search on forums if you have a question. There's the seller's handbook where it explains like everything. They have videos, they have like an article on every like and anything you'd want to know about their site. Um, so I, I do like Etsy. However, there are lots of fees on Etsy, which is the is one of the things that annoys me the most is about a year ago, or maybe a year and a half ago, they raised the transaction fee from like 2% to like 5%, which was kind of a big jump. Um, and they seem to keep changing things like a, about a year ago also or less than a year ago they they made it so that they wanted all of us to start doing free shipping on orders over 35 dollars 
which was like the whole Etsy community went up in an uproar because we all it's it's hard to provide free shipping when you're just a little person but they want you to just add the shipping cost into the cost of the item which is possible but then I just feel like I'm ripping people off but that's what I did because what happened was if you don't do that they don't put your listings at the top of the search when people search for dragon print my print wouldn't be at the top if I didn't have my shop set to that $35 free shipping thing so like there's things you can't control which you know but they do like if you don't want to set up your own website to start it is a good starting point um, and then basically also the fees that they charge. So now they charge 5% of the transaction um, plus the processing fee, which is another 3%. So it's 8% once you make the sale, um, which is kind of a lot for an online site. Um, so I, I charge 10% more for my art on Etsy than I do in person. And I kind of warn people that in my booth, I'm like, well, you can buy it on Etsy, but you could get a lower price from me with cash in my booth. Um, there's also one more thing that they added recently because they, um, I'm assuming they're collecting more revenue because they're charging us more for stuff now. So they have started advertising more. You, you see commercials for Etsy now, which is kind of cool, but they have offsite ads where they're starting to advertise your items not on Etsy. So if someone was on Google and they search for something, your listing might show up from Etsy. But if someone clicks on it and buys it from the offsite ad, they charge you 15% advertising fee. It's free unless someone actually purchases from you. Mm -hmm. You can turn off this feature, but only if you make less than $10,000 on Etsy a year, which I'm like right at the cusp. I'm like, please, I don't want to be charge 15% without having a say. So mm -hmm. goods and bads. <laughs> the worst thing is that you can't always control everything on Etsy, but the good things are it's very established and it's a good starting point. But okay. Troy, I'm gonna unmute you so you can talk a little bit about that. And then after that, we have another question. Uh, Troy, are you there? Yes. So uh, back when, before I had my own website, I used the pattern website and it was actually, I enjoyed it. I liked uh, the, the tools. It was fairly easy to use. Um, but the once I had my own website, then I stopped, you know, paying for the, the, the pattern services. But if you don't have another way uh, to get your products out there, I think it's good, because it does give you a little bit more control of how you set up the look and feel of your site. Uh, much more so than, uh, like Amy was saying, with Etsy, they just lay things out and that's, you don't have a say in it. Yeah. The pattern does give you that choice. Cool. Great. Thank you, Troy. Uh, Michelle, you yeah. have a question. Do you want to ask it now? Yes. Uh, Amy, it sounds like you're very successful with your Etsy site. And I was wondering what your average price point is for your site. Um, so the, my price points ranges between $6 for cards up to, um, I think my most expensive item on Etsy that I sell often would be like 95. So like I sell usually within the range of $6 to $95. Okay. I do sometimes get sales larger than that. Like I did just sell an original on Etsy, which is kind of like mind blowing that hasn't happened in a while. Um, but I do find that people go for like my, my average sale is probably like $45. Okay. Um, and this is even with the like 10% bump that I charge. So like my prints, my 11 by 14 prints in the, my booth are 45 on Etsy. I actually charge 55 on Etsy. Um, but I find that people, it makes you want to raise my price in my booth because people don't seem to have a problem paying both the higher prices on Etsy. But I, one of my things already is that I try to make my art affordable. So I'm, I go for volume instead of like sitting around trying to sell more expensive art. I do have some originals listed for like $2,000, but I don't have hopes of selling them on Etsy, but it would be amazing if I did. Um, but I do use it for smaller, for smaller items most of the time. Oops, sorry. Um, so the, the uh, next 
category, and we'll have plenty of time for some more questions later, is the print-on-demand sites. Mm -hmm. And these started out, I think, uh, more as the, um, uh, like Zazzle, I think, was the first one that I ever was familiar with. These are places where you upload your images, uh, the image is sold, and often the uh, service uh, does the fulfillment for you. So clearly they're not going to be uh, three-dimensional, they're not going to be limited edition likely, and they're not gonna be signed. Um, I believe, uh, Kat, you had some experience with one of these? Um, no, I haven't used one of these, but I've talked with art storefronts and um, I do have some friends that use it. And so art storefronts uh, has a whole built-in marketing arm that you have to pay for. It. It's very expensive. Art storefronts wanted a $2,800 upfront um, fee to get started with their site. And I think they're integrated with Bay Photo and one other printer. And I have um, two artist friends that have been with art storefronts for a year and both of them said not much has happened even though they have this whole marketing arm. And I think the marketing arm, what it does is it emails you templates and stuff for you to do the marketing. And you know, I, I don't think that's worth paying for. Um, I think artists are creative enough that um, we can get to the people who follow us um, if we've kept our email list up anyway. So I don't really have hands-on experience with that. It's just uh, out of my price range. Cool. So this is another uh, page that Kat put together for us. This, uh, some of it sounds really uh, valuable. So Kat, do you wanna kind of introduce this? Sure. Um, there are two, um, two gentlemen, uh, artists in Britain that are friends. One um, who is named Kevin Tyson. And he started this really great idea. He started an account called Isolation Art School. And it's artists, some big name artists uh, in Britain who are giving free art classes on Instagram. And um, some of them are quite good. Uh, others are just entertaining because they're um, odd things or the filming isn't very good. But overall, I'd say it's excellent. But the other big opportunity is something called the Artist Support Pledge. Um, the Artist Support Pledge was started by Matthew Burroughs. Um, Matthew's friends with Kevin. And, and um, the Artist Support Pledge is very simple. You offer a work of art for $200 or less, and you post it, and once you have sold a uh, thousand dollars worth of art, then you pledge to buy another artist's work. There are now, I don't even know, 18,000 artists selling work on Instagram in this manner, and it's going really well. So I was curious myself, so I started today, and um, I'm not so good with typing and I'm not really quick on a phone. So I decided to set up one of those big cartel websites with all my smalls on it. And what I did was I posted on my Instagram page um, photos of some of the work and I mocked up some install photos so that people would get an idea of what my paintings would look like um, in somebody's home. And I, put the link in my profile on Instagram so people could easily click and go to the website and, and see all the work and then decide what they wanna do. So I sold five paintings already today. I was totally shocked. And I in turn bought another artist's work, which is part of the pledge. So the next time I sell another thousand, which I think will probably take longer, I'm not, you know, who knows? But, um, you know, it's all on the honor system. So um, I think it's a great way for artists to support artists and anybody can buy the work. And it doesn't have to be flat work. It doesn't have to be 2D work. It could be pottery. It could be jewelry. It could be anything. I would love to see um, 
somebody who's not a painter um, post for the artist support pledge because I'm always interested in, in getting the type of work that I, I can't make myself. Um, so anyway, I think it's a great thing to check out. Um, you can, if you just Google artist support pledge, you'll find a lot of information online or you can go to the artist support pledge page on Instagram. So Patreon is like a, it's asking people to become patrons of whatever you're doing. So I've seen Patreons for like projects, like to fund projects or like comic book artists who like are trying to put out their own comic book, but they, they also want to like live. So people are helping pay them so that they can work all day, but then like they can also pay rent. Um, so you can add different levels of like a pledge. So even like $1 a month up to, I think you can set your own amounts, like $1 a month, $3 a month, $5 a month, up to like, I don't, I don't know if there's a limit. Um, but, and then with, with each level, you can be like, oh, if you pledge me $10 a month, you're in this range of like a gift. So like, oh, you get a free tote bag if you're someone who's pledging me time about $10 a month or, and I'm trying to come up with like what I'm going to offer if I do, this. Mm -hmm. but in theory, it's like, I'm thinking of it as a good way for getting money from people who might not want to actually buy my art, mm -hmm. but also just want to support me because they know I'm an artist and they know that I'm struggling. So Oh, and I think you can, a lot of people I see that have Patreons put, like, it's like a feed also, like, so you can post videos and stuff or posts mm -hmm. like Facebook, but like on the Patreon and they can be like locked. So you have to be a patron to see my exclusive content here on Patreon. Right. Um, I was, a, so I think that's cool. I just have to come up with like exclusive content. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that would be yet, but I think I'm going to go for it because I think that there's people out there who really want to support artists right now and might not know the best way to do that. So. Yeah, I, I agree, Amy. I, I have a couple of friends on there and they're doing like, you know, uh, kind of behind the scenes uh, studio tours and, um, you know, showing how they do some of their work and some of the stuff that the general public who buys their work wouldn't normally get to see. And so I guess you would have to figure out what that is. Um, and I know that, that they're also, um, for people that pledge a lot of money, I think they're doing either prints or small paintings for them. I, I'm not exactly sure of the details, but um, I do think it's an interesting platform and worth checking out. I do follow um, a fine artist. He's... I only met him one time at a show because he only sells like original paintings. I don't think he sells prints. Mm. Um, and he has a Patreon. And every time I get his email newsletter, sometimes at the end of it, you have to click to continue and it takes you to the Patreon. And then you can't see the rest of the email until <laughs> you're a patron. And I'm like, I want to see the rest of your email, but I know that he has a really high donation level where he'll like paint your portrait if you pledge him like $200 a month or something wow. for wow. a year. And I'm like, that's so cool. Like, <laughs> I know his like his commissions fill up quickly. So like, if you wanted to get one ever, like you could just be a patron and then he would, he would eventually do one for you. So yeah, it's funny. That's, that's great. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the other link here, the Blink Art, um, there is an art consulting firm in Cincinnati, and an art consulting firm is a firm that places art for institutions like um, medical um, hospitals, um, uh, long-term care centers, uh, corporate art um, collections, corporate art collections, stuff like that. So that's all they do is place art. And um, there's a firm in Cincinnati called um, Art Design Consultants, ADC. And they publish every year a catalog called Blank Art. Um, I have been in the catalog one time. You have to pay to be in it. And they send it to a bunch of designers and galleries. And I didn't really get a lot out of it. So I only did it one year. But Blank Art you can never get off their email list apparently 
Um, so I did get a very nice email recently, actually, that had a list of fantastic resources. And so this um, link that says blank art has a giant list of all sorts of financial um, options that are happening now that we're not discussing in, in this um, seminar um, for artists, but um, other ideas of where to sell your art, um, how to get online, that sort of thing. So it's, it's very comprehensive and you might be able to find something in there that could help you as well. I think you're unmuted now. Hi, how are you everyone? Hi. Hi. Um, my question was that Etsy seems to be a really great platform for um, art that is $100 or less. Uh, I sell jewelry that is between $200 and $300. And I wanted to know if there were suggestions about other platforms where uh, those price points would be appropriate. You know, I, I'd probably make my own website. I do have that. And I okay. do have a large email list. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I just, I just am thinking, what box am I not checking? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, I'm not hearing a lot of things. It sounds like I'm not quite as uh, uh, behind the eight ball as I thought I was. No, no, not at all. Um, I don't know of any other particular platforms like Etsy that are out there, especially anything specific to jewelry. I'm friends with a, with a fine artist jeweler whose work ranges from like $50 to like $900. Uh -huh. She has her own website and then she also does have an Etsy store. Um, I'm not sure which one does better but she, it looks like she has like a limited amount of stuff on Etsy, like the stuff that it's part of her like regular collection. And then her like one of a kind pieces are on her own website. Yes. And another thing that she's doing right now on Instagram is she's, she's doing a sale every day with like a specific one of a kind piece. So she's saying like, here's this like one of a kind Labradorite something necklace. And it's usually $240. Now I'm selling it for 180 just today. So just message me if you'd like to buy this. Right. And it seems like she's selling like, I mean, and then she updates it throughout the, throughout the day with like sold or something. And I'm seeing a lot of them as it's sold. Mm -hmm. So I think if you mix, Good idea. if you right, if you mix like two different sales platforms and then like mix in some, some social media sales or like even you could probably do that on your email newsletter too like once a week or something like this one piece is a special i'm guessing your pieces are one of a kind made from That's so correct. my recommendation because it's a higher price and they are one of a kind is i suggest trying to align with maybe some influencers in your market um, it could be, you know, maybe gifting something to a TV host that does the local news mm -hmm. or, um, you know, someone that is in politics. And then, uh, or if you have current clients that are naturally um, verbose and have a lot of followers and then get their testimonials and referrals. So be I think um, your brand positioning should be like you sell one of a kind and because you are one of a kind, mm -hmm. right? Because no one else can have that piece of jewelry. Sure. So I would try to find influential people to help you market it. And whether it's on Etsy or your website, I think you'll have a better chance of selling a higher price point item. Great idea. Thank you, Kelly. Okay. And then Troy, you had something? Uh, yeah, with regards to the free shipping uh, issue with Etsy, uh, my items are quite heavy. Uh, last uh, last sculpture I sent out cost me sixty nine dollars and sold for one hundred and twenty five. So <laughs> I can't really do the free shipping. Yeah. So when I when that was first coming out, the they so it's not required. No, it's um, not required. It's not required. It's just they they've set it up in a way that incentive in, gives you an incentive to do it because it puts your listings higher in the search so like sure. i still have shipping turned on for 
Like if I'm selling one card for six dollars, I do not charge free shipping for that because like I would lose all of the money because the shipping costs about three dollars. So um, what I would do if I were you is I would either just keep it the same or I would literally add seventy dollars to the price because I did see um, I I follow a, a frame company on Etsy where I buy lots of handmade wooden frames and they also sell like benches and stuff and they when this came out all their prices went up and I and I looked back at what I had been paying for like a specific frame and then I noticed it went up like 15 percent and that's why I'm assuming that's what they're doing but you don't actually have it's not required so do you have uh are there other groups that uh we we talked about in the, the list you know like the the Amazon handmade and things of that nature that don't have the free shipping requirement that Etsy does. So, so Troy, are you on Sachi by chance? Sachi, no. So they do have sculpture on Sachi, and so Sachi Art, if you're not familiar, is a worldwide platform for artists to sell artwork. It's 2D photography, and I've seen some sculpture. I don't know the percentage of each. And there's a zillion artists, it's not juried. You set up an account, you upload your images, and Sachi takes 35%. It's a little bit better than a brick and mortar gallery um, who takes 50%. Um, Sachi will pay for the shipping. You have to incorporate the price for you to package it in your sales price. Um, and so what happens is like, if I sell a large painting and some of my paintings are um, five by six feet in size, I have to build a crate myself and it's actually not me. I'm very fortunate to have a husband who's willing to do this um, if I buy him a case of beer or something. <laughs> so um, once you build your crate or whatever you're shipping it in, um, you know, you schedule with Sachi and then they have somebody come pick it up and it goes anywhere in the world, wherever your buyer is. And there's a zillion people on Sachi. And I, when I first got on there, I thought it was crazy that I should even be on there. How could anybody find me was what I was thinking. But what Sachi does is they take about 100 artists every week and they put together an email called New, New This Week, or they'll do... Um, the color red or they'll do some kind of theme and they'll send out a newsletter that says new this week and it'll have different artists in it and it'll have you know one item from each of the hundred artists and so I was on Sachi for a couple months and nothing was happening I had I think four people following me <laughs> and um, I got in one of those new this week uh, newsletters and don't you know I sold a really large painting a couple weeks after that and they do that you know they I don't know if they reach everybody but that's kind of how you rise to the top of all those artists um, but I also have plenty of um, uh, people that come to art shows who have told me oh, I was shopping on Sachi and I saw you. And so, you know, all the worlds kind of cross and meet. Um, but I would, I would recommend looking into it. If you're not on Sachi, it's a platform that can, I think there's a lot of people that shop on Sachi. So it's a platform that can get some eyeballs on your work and it might just get you some good sales. I um, was surprised. I sell about as well as one of my brick and mortar galleries in a year. So um, I've been very pleased with it and I can stay in my pajamas. <laughs> I don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> so it's something to think about. 